Hey guys, I'm Jade. I recently got married to my boyfriend of six years, Richard. Richard and I met in high school and have been together since. He's a loving, caring, and he earns well, and he cooks. Overall, a complete package, I'd say. Every day with him is like a dream. I felt like the luckiest girl when I got married to him. However, whoever said that nothing is perfect knew what they were talking about. Similarly, my seemingly perfect life had a tiny problem. It's my mother-in-law. I mean, come on, guys. Don't take me in the exact wrong way. She ain't evil or anything like you guys must be habitual of reading by now. No, instead, she was really nice and supportive. Let's just say that she had a little problem. She was a bit nosy, especially where finances were concerned. Trust me, ten times more annoying than it actually sounds. She had this habit of always scrutinizing the way we handled our finances, the way we spent, saved, invested, and it wasn't just that she had a problem with it. Guys, she was more than willing to share her expert opinion on everything. So, at first I took it as an elder's sound advice. Then I thought her to be a bit obnoxious, but wondered if maybe she really knows this stuff, and... I mean, her husband Richard's father is loaded. What if she was the one who helped him retain everything? Well, however, this was not the case, you see. My father-in-law hardly trusted her with money. Well, why? Oh, that's a story for later, but I promise I'll tell you guys in a bit. I clearly remember um, our wedding preparations as it was yesterday, and as Richard and I were getting ready for our wedding, my mother-in-law decided she wanted to help out with the planning. She was really involved in everything. Well, especially when it came to the finances, and she was really involved in it too. Every time we picked something for the wedding, like where to have it or what flowers to get, she had something to say. She always wanted to find cheaper options, which was nice sometimes, but it also made me feel like I was being questioned all the time. Like, when we talked about how much to spend, she would always be asking if we really needed to spend that much, and... When it came to things like flowers, she kept saying we could find something just as nice for less money. It was like she was trying to save money at every step, which was good in a way, but also kind of tiring. Don't even get me started about the time when Richard and I were on the hunt for our very first home. It was such an exciting time. I mean, uh, filled with dreams of all these little cozy evenings that we would have by the fireplace or maybe even a lazy Sunday morning of our own space. But little did we know, this journey would also introduce us to a whole new level of meddling from my dear mother-in-law. You see, as soon as we mentioned the word house hunting, it was as if she transformed into a real estate guru overnight. Suddenly, she had an opinion on every aspect of our search. From the neighborhoods that we should consider to the lenders we should trust, it felt like she had been saving up real estate advice just for the moment and she was determined to unload it all on us. No matter how many times we tried to assert our independence and tell her that we appreciated her input but wanted to make our own decisions, so just because she couldn't resist the urge to interfere. That's the reason to this day Richard and I have been living with his parents. So, overall, my mother-in-law was a really big pain in the behind. Her control grew slowly. Initially, it was just well-thought-out advice. However, before I could even understand, she went from giving advice to keeping tabs on my finances. It wasn't just my finances, but my husband and father-in-law went through the same thing. Yeah, you heard that right. Not even my father-in-law is safe from her, even though he's a wealthy business owner who probably must know a lot about handling and growing money than my mother-in-law would ever know. I remember a particular family gathering where my father-in-law, being the laid-back sort, casually mentioned his retirement portfolio, perhaps just to have something to share or advise us on doing the same. I can only imagine how much he must have regretted saying anything afterward. The moment my father-in-law mentioned this, my mother-in-law poured over his investment choices like a hawk, questioning why he had not opted for this fund or that stock and offering her own solicited advice and how he should manage his retirement funds. Questioning and lecturing us on our financial choices was a daily ritual for her. She would scrutinize our spending habits, question our investment choices, and even try to control our spending budget. I tried everything from dodging her questions to politely asking her to back off. Nothing worked. She was always insistent with her inquiries, 
According to her, a penny spent without consulting her was a penny wasted. <laughs> Whenever we saw her coming, we knew that we would have to endure another round of questioning about our finances. So, naturally, soon I started feeling absolutely suffocated by her constant interference. I wanted to make her back off, I just didn't know how to. Well, things went overboard the day she asked to access our bank account. I had just come back from my office. And I found my husband and father-in-law in between one of the lectures about keeping track of all the money and importance of it. I tried to run away before she could see me, but it was a little too late. She saw me and there was delight all over her face, the kind that makes you just want to disappear. She clapped her hands together and asked me to join her and, well, I had to. So I learned about the importance of investing from my mother-in-law even when I'm the finance head in the household. <laughs> LOL. Anyways, after about half an hour, which seemed like years, going on and on about investing in the right places, she paused, tilted her head, and said, Maybe it would be better if I had access to all your accounts so I can track it better. You can share it with me by the end of the night. What? Yeah, that's how my mother-in-law demanded access to our bank accounts as if she had only asked for a Wi-Fi password. She asked not only for the access to our bank accounts, but also asked about the detailed information of our income and expenses being shared with her every month. We had to say yes, and none of us wanted to sit through another hour-long session about how she was doing it all for our benefit and how we would thank her later in life for trying to take care of our money as we are too stupid to do it ourselves. That night and the whole next day while I was in the office, I could not stop thinking about how it's high time that we talk to Mr. Mother-in-Law about her middling. I went home thinking about discussing this with my husband, but I found my mother-in-law waiting with him. She had some sheets in her hand and was interrogating my husband, and to my horror, it was the bank statements of the last ten days, and she was going through everything, asking what he bought this for and that for. There was no way I could handle this much meddling. It wasn't about money. This clearly violated my privacy and boundaries, and I ran straight to my room and pretended to sleep. Here I am writing, you guys. I understand that this is something in her nature, and she can't just stop overnight. However, I firmly believe that because we've been giving in to her demands. They seem to have been growing tremendously, and I cannot live like this. I just don't know what to do, but... One thing I know for sure is that I can't let her keep meddling in our lives like this. Well, that's why I'm here asking for suggestions from you guys. Have you guys ever found yourself in a similar predicament? How did you handle it? Do you have an advice or suggestion for dealing with meddling in laws? I'm all ears and eager to learn from your experience. Until next time. Update number one. Hello again, everyone. I'm back with an update, but first of all, thank you so much for such um, overwhelming engagement. I never thought so many people would be interested in my story. Thank you all for your kind words and suggestions. Some of you who uh, think that I have not tried talking to my mother-in-law have no idea what you're talking about. You're yapping. You drink a yappuccino. I tried talking to her like a million times, but somehow each conversation would turn into her lecturing me about how irresponsible I was with money. Ugh, can you believe it? This is why it's high time I take things into my own hands and put a stop to this once and for all. Yeah, well, anyways. So, right after the day I posted my story, I discussed the situation with one of my friends in my office. She, in return, offered the most wicked ideas of all. She suggested that I make my mother-in-law make a mistake in handling our finances, something that we can use against her and ask her to stop meddling in our affairs. I can't say I wasn't intrigued. I mean, it did sound wrong, framing her like this, but I was also scared that if nothing is done soon, we might as well give her all our money and wait for an allowance from her every month. So I agreed and asked her how she proposed that I go through with it. She tells me that she could craft a fake investment scheme website and somehow make my mother-in-law invest in it. Rest will automatically be taken care of, and you know, I was a bit skeptical at first, but I had had enough of her meddling, so we got to work. We spent days researching and devising a fake investment scheme, 
It was convincing that even a seasoned investor would have been fooled. She and I have been friends since the day I joined the office, which was five years ago. We clicked the moment we talked and have been together since then. So when I told her about the situation with mother-in-law, believe me, she was more fired up about that than me and promised me that we would, quote, get her. Honestly, I have no doubts about it either. I don't. After all, she is the star performer in our company. <laughs> all that hard work paid off, guys, when we finally came up with the absolute perfect plan. Our fake investment scheme had everything. I'm talking detailed financial projects, projections, impressive looking charts and graphs, and even testimonials from supposed satisfied investors. It was a lot of work, um, but seeing it all come together was incredibly satisfying. Our fake investment scheme, it was ready. The next was to make mother-in-law take the bait. This would be a bit tricky, as mother-in-law does not trust anyone except herself. And don't even get me started on the views when it comes to finances. Oh, only she knows the best. The rest, everyone's out there to lose their money or get scammed. So, I knew that I could not be the one presenting this to her. She had to come across the website on her own. I guess I'll have to figure that out too. However, as much as I want her to stop meddling in my finances, I'm just also concerned what if I'm taking it a bit too far. I have doubts whether or not should I go forward with the plan. I mean, what do you guys even suggest? Please do let me know in the comments down below. Update number two. Hey, it's me. Uh, so, <laughs> hello. It's been three days since I last posted, and trust me when I say my mother-in-law is pressing me to hand over my account access. I'm uh, sure not really how much longer I can handle this situation before I finally just snap. Some of you in the comments suggested that this may be the wrong way of going through the things, and trust me, I do agree. I would have never even thought of doing anything such if there was any other way left. So, do you guys remember the last time I posted? Everything was ready. We had successfully created a fake investment scheme. That would look believable to someone, um, even someone experienced, really. Now, my next task was to make my mother-in-law invest in the fake investment scheme. It was a delicate task that required careful planning and execution, as she hardly trusted anyone or anything when it came to money. I knew I had to be subtle yet persuasive to convince her to hand over her savings without raising any suspicions. So, I started by uh, slowly messing with the algorithm of her phone and laptop. Uh, adjusting them in such a way that they would suggest the importance and benefits of investing in high-return plans. I wanted her to believe that everybody was already doing it, and that she would be missing out if she did not jump on board. It was like playing a game of Yahtzee. A tricky one, mind you. Trying to manipulate her without even her realizing it. But I was determined to succeed. I mean, what choice did I have? I had to teach her to not invade other people's privacy and put a stop to her meddling once and for all. So, I spent hours poring over the settings on her devices, tweaking them just so until they were ready to lead her straight to the fake investment plan my friend and I created. Slowly but surely, I began to see results. My mother-in-law started receiving notifications and pop-ups on her devices, all subtly urging her to consider high-return investment opportunities. At first, she seemed skeptical, as any cautious investor would be, but we had done a solid job on our own website, and my friend had anticipating her doubts prior and made sure to counter them carefully crafted messages. It played on her fears of missing out on a golden opportunity. However, I have to say, my mother-in-law was far more cautious than I would have expected her to be. She researched the company and scoured the internet for any signs of scam or fraud. But I said we created a solid plan, did I not? We had created a fake profile for the investment plan that looked as legitimate as any real company's. And soon enough, my mother-in-law was absolutely hook, line, and sinker. She was convinced that she had stumbled upon a gold mine, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and she was eager to get into the action. I found her regularly checking the benefits and calculating the profits in her head. Her excitement was over the moon. I wouldn't say that seeing her this excited did not come with a twinge of guilt, 
But then I reminded myself of all the times that mother-in-law straight up meddled in my personal affairs. Of all the stress and frustration she had caused me and Richard, this needed to be done. And as the days passed, my mother-in-law seemed absolutely happier than ever, blissfully unaware of the trap that she had fallen herself into. She was so excited and happy that she even stopped checking our expense sheets and her lectures around the house became considerably lower, and trust me, this alone was worth all of that trouble. Now, for now, the ball is simply in my mother-in-law's court, and all I can do is wait. I'll update you guys in a bit. Update number three. Hello, everyone. It's been three months since I last updated. A lot's happened, so let me get right into it. Remember the last time I posted and my mother-in-law was hooked on the website I created? She was brimming with excitement about the plan, and as the weeks went by, my mother-in-law became more and more convinced that the investment plan she found online was the real deal Holyfield. She spent hours poring over the website, reading every word, and analyzing every detail, and the more she read, the more convinced she became that this was her ticket to financial freedom. What struck me the most was that without even discussing it with her husband and her son, she makes the decision to invest all of her savings right into the plan. She was so caught up in the excitement of it all that she did not stop to think about the consequences. Not what you would expect from somebody who spends her every minute preaching to the others on how to be responsible with their money. Anyways, for the first few days, she was really happy and hopeful about her high returns, however. As time passed, my mother-in-law started to get eager, waiting for the promised returns on her investment. But as weeks turned into months, nothing happens. I could see the panic growing in her eyes as she realized that she's been scammed. It was a painful sight to watch, knowing well enough that I was the reason behind her predicament. She frantically tried to contact the fake investment company. I couldn't help but feel bad for her, as if I knew she was not going to find anything. <laughs> My friend and I had already wiped the websites off the face of the internet, leaving her with nothing to trace it. At first, she kept her worries to herself. She didn't want to admit to her husband or son that she had made such a big mistake. But as the weeks went by and the promised returns failed to come, she knew she could not keep it a secret. Finally, she confessed everything to her husband and son about the investment plan that she'd fallen for. My father-in-law was simply devastated. He had lost all of his savings at the hands of his wife and her arrogance, and I'd never seen him this angry. He was furious with her, and he blocked her from accessing any of their accounts, and gave her a stern warning to never make any decisions regarding the money again, let alone others. Not only this, my father-in-law imposed other financial repercussions on her, too. Example. She'll have to return all the money that she had lost back to him. How? Now, well, that's her problem. Whether she starts cutting back on her expenses or just simply finds another way, she'll not have access to even her own account till she does that. I, I think I won. I mean, um, she won't interfere with anyone's finances anymore. Yeah, it was a harsh punishment, but my father-in-law was determined to protect what little they had left. Um, anyways, I'll drop a final update, and I'll let you guys know exactly what happened. Well, until then, see ya. Final update. Hey guys, I hope you're all well. It's been two weeks since my previous update, and thank you for the comments and support. Some of you advised that it would be better for me to tell them the truth as soon as possible, and I do agree. Many of you believe that I was too harsh with my mother-in-law and that my father-in-law did not deserve to lose his lifelong savings over a petty lesson that I decided to teach mother-in-law. Trust me, I agree with you. However, this was not the case at all. Allow me to explain. I'll start from where I left off. As you guys remember, uh, well, my father-in-law was devastated about losing his savings. But there's a huge argument, and well, I would not call it an argument, since my father-in-law was doing all the talking and mother-in-law was just listening. Well... Uh, that was a very quiet night at the house as nobody spoke anything. The next day, I knew that I could not keep my husband in the dark any longer. So I called him and my father-in-law to meet me at a cafe during my office lunch hours, saying that I had something important to tell them. Well, they arrive. I sat them down and I spilled the beans. 
I told them the whole website was my plan and how I just went about tricking my mother-in-law into believing uh, she herself had stumbled upon it and how convincing the website had been. There was a chance that everything would happen and she would fall for it. At first, they were shocked, as anybody would be. However, to my surprise, instead of being angry, they thanked me. Richard admitted that he had long been frustrated with his mother's constant interference in their financial affairs, and my father-in-law then tells me the reason he was so angry. It wasn't because she lost the money. He agreed that such scams are pretty lucrative and seem genuine that anyone can fall for it. However, he was mad at her constantly telling everyone off how to take care of their money. When she herself did something like this, he confessed the reason he was so angry and strict was to stop her from meddling in anyone's finances and repeating her mistake a third time. A third time? Yeah, turns out this was not the first time my mother-in-law had lost money. Years ago, she had made a similar mistake with Mr. Jenkins' savings, but he had forgiven her, thinking it was just a one-time error. Now that it had been repeated again, it was important to teach her that all her actions do have consequences. Honestly, I was so relieved to hear this, and did I mention, as soon as I tell my father-in-law that all the money my mother-in-law invested was safe with me, and that I would never risk my mother-in-law's hard-earned money. He was delighted to hear that and announced that he would be gifting the two of us a vacation to Italy. So, it was a win-win for me. My mother-in-law was out of my hair as my father-in-law had forbidden her to use her own account, let alone others, lol. My father-in-law, asshole, he kept the whole thing being my plan a secret, so my mother-in-law does not go for payback. This led to my mother-in-law cutting off a lot of her expenses, and I guess she deserved it. I mean, I feel sorry for my mother-in-law, but, well, she needed to learn her lesson. See ya.